In many countries, railways are comparable to veins in the human body, as they are a swift and efficient way of transporting both important supplies and people throughout its network. This also makes them vital in the development of countries and the industries within them. So why would anyone want to rip them up? There are three main reasons that spring to mind. One, they become obsolete due to competing road traffic. Two, the line gets redirected a different way. Or three, Because of how essential they can be when it comes to transporting troops and supplies, it's obvious that railways provide a significant tactical advantage to any side that has them, and so destroying the lines or gaining control over them is an important tactical consideration. Many railways in the UK were targeted and bombed during the Second World War, and subsequently, the railways were how Germany was able to move so many soldiers into French and Russian territory in order to control it. Obviously then, you're going to want to find an effective way of removing the enemy's rail in order to have an advantage over them. Two notable ways this was done was during the American Civil War and the World Wars in Europe. During the US Civil War, General William Sherman ordered his soldiers to pull up Confederate rails, lay them on piles of wood, and burn them. Once heated enough to be malleable, the rails were to be twisted into a spiral shape. This was done as the Confederate Army had little iron supplies, and as such, didn't have the resources to repair their railroads to the extent they were damaged. Most Union soldiers found the twisting method too tedious, so instead, they'd heat the rails until malleable in the middle and bend them around trees, creating a loop shape. Once bent in this way, the rails were near impossible to straighten out without special equipment. Only one Confederate railroad leading to Atlanta remained three days after the order was given. These bent rails came to be known as Sherman's neckties, and was one of the main reasons the Union was able to hold against the Confederate armies. There are still a few on display at various Civil War museums. The second method of destruction was significantly more efficient. This entailed using a railroad plow. Essentially, a special wagon with a solid hook-shaped metal arm hanging off the back would be pulled along the line by a locomotive or attached to the back of a train. The hook would be lowered and dragged between the tracks, ripping the sleepers and distorting the rails. The first notable usage of them was in Russia during the First World War, to prevent enemy forces from advancing through Poland. Some were used by the Czechoslovakian army in 1938 during German occupation, but the most notable uses were by Germany in the closing years of the war as part of the scorched earth policies that were in place to keep back the pressing Russian and Allied forces. They were very effective as they'd not only ruined the tracks, but greatly disturbed the ballast and rail bedding too, making it much harder to relay sturdy lines. As well as this, any bridges or signalling equipment these hooks passed over would be seriously damaged. While these hooks alone weren't enough to completely stop troops advancing, they certainly slowed down enemy progress by a noteworthy amount. So when you're getting ready to invade an enemy country or simply want to stop an enemy from getting to you easily, remember to hit them where it hurts right in the railways. Though it does seem a shame to ruin a perfectly good set of rails. I suppose war is good for nothing after all. Subscribe for more. <laughs>